Hi everyone, I'm doing a live blood analysis. So you'll be able to see on the screen what I'm looking at. And these are red blood cells. And this is what's called a dark field microscope. So that's why they don't they don't look red. It's a light inversion. And the reason we have that is that we're able to see the, the medium or the plasma that the blood cells are floating in. And we get to see all the other goodies that are in there too. So the red red cells are the predominant cell in our blood. That's why it's it's red. And on this sample, we're seeing a lot of deformity of the shapes of the red blood cells. They have like almost like a teardrop appearance uh, and protein linkages. I'll try to centralize the example here without going too far. You can see almost in the center, just to the right, and it looks like a couple red blood cells. They almost look like almost like sausages on a string. You know, this individual has a lot of inflammation, and that's part of the reason why the cells are somewhat stuck together in this format. You can also see it looks like a little snowstorm in the background. These are somatids. They're normal, but he has an elevated amount, this patient. Uh, and I usually see that with um, dysglycemia or poor blood sugar control. And you also see in this segment, you can see a little bit of uh, spicule formation, like the little spider web like structures in the center. If I slide across here, you'll probably see a lot more of it if I can get to a section. I already went through the slide. Uh, well, I'll mention it when we get there. There's a lot of broken cells, membranes are somewhat weak. That's an issue with fat metabolism. And when I first looked at the slide, the spicules showed up right away. And this is a good example of it here. If I can get into a little bit more focus in the background. So the slide starts out clear or black in the background and within the first few minutes it was already kind of covered, like say, like it's it's like moss forming over a pond. When I see that the individual has what we call metabolic syndrome, uh, borderline diabetes, borderline blood pressure, borderline cholesterol. So that's what this person has, um, and where I would start is improving their digestion. Uh, there's a stress response, which is putting them in sympathetic overdrive, which shuts down their digestive system. So they're not producing stomach acid. And then when they try to break down food, it's not getting broken down properly. So they're having issues with elimination and they're having issues with absorption of nutrients. They usually come in a little bit overweight. Sometimes they come in underweight, but usually overweight. And with a, a bloated abdomen, and if, you, if I ask them, they're like, oh, I need to lose some weight. And I mean, it's partly true, but the, the protuberance of their abdomen is not really related to fat alone, but a lot of bloating, intestinal swelling. I'm gonna switch over to what I call a dry analysis, because there's a lot more information. the lighting so that you can see everything properly. A little bit. So this is a drop of blood that's allowed to dry. And I say like it, it's similar to cutting through a tree you can count the rings and see how old it is. Well, not exactly the same, I can't tell how old it is, but you get a banding pattern. So there's like a central section and then there's this layer that has some these white patches and then there's a bit of a more of a crusted layer and then a very kind of smoked out shady layer that's at the end. The central region is usually where we have gut disturbances not too much there, but the second layer where there's all this white patchiness, it's a sign of inflammation. And the 
be more dense and then more uh, that it, cir it circles this outer layer here. That's a sign that he's got a high, high inflammation. Usually it is related to the gut, like I was describing. He's not digesting well. This third layer where it's very cracked uh, is usually a sign of adrenal exhaustion. And then this outer layer describes um, high acidity and mineral loss. So the thicker that layer, the more stress and the more acidity that's the result of that stress. And our body is very vigilant in maintaining a, a, an appropriate pH. So what happens is that we lose minerals and then that mineral loss is excreted. And so we're always in a deficit. So in this individual, what we're doing is to start to improve their digestion and correct for this imbalance. And what you'll notice is that over time, they have more energy, they feel less fatigued, they have less inflammation, their appetite improves, their cravings decline, and the symptoms that they come in for, uh, they don't really, they notice an improvement even though we're not directly addressing the symptom itself. I tell them, that's like the tip of the iceberg. You want the iceberg tip addressed, but I gotta work on the underneath. In the end, it's, the patient feels better, that's all that matters. Okay, that was my little quick tutorial on live blood analysis, and I will be doing more as I get more interesting findings. This was pretty standard. Most people will come in with a combination of these. All right. I'm Dr. Jason Grimsotto from TriHealth Wellness.